products. So I also started in educational technologies. Uh, right after uh, finishing my university, I started this, or co-founded this company. This was um, um, at the Ming Award. So we got an award for like one of the best digital solutions in, uh, like from a Viennese company. And so I started as a founder myself, 10 years ago, even more. So I have been active as a founder myself. Uh, started there, uh, I worked there for five years, and then I moved on to co-found other startups in different verticals as well. Think about mobility, think about HR, and so on. And over the years, for sure, I gained a lot of experiences, and I worked with a lot of different teams. You can see this is my first startup, what you do. At like our climax, we were around 70 people in six different countries. Edotech, this one is more in the e-commerce field, this one in mobility, and so on and so on. So I have some kind of a quite founder's background and founder-like experience. Um, but that's not all. Um, after being active as a founder for 10 years, I, I moved into angel investing. So I started like investing into startups as well. And two and a half years ago, I ended here at the Chamber of Commerce. So I'm now responsible for all the startup companies in Austria. So if you want to found your own startup at one point, just come to me, I will support you. Apart from that, you can see some of my other experiences, some of the startups I've co-founded or invested, some of the investment vehicles I'm active, and also like my main, main job. So yeah, let's get straight to the, to just um, another short info about what I'm doing. So we have at the Chamber of Commerce, the so-called startup services, where we service like uh, upcoming founders and current startups. There are different programs we have created from one-on-one -on -one founder advisory on a weekly basis to InnoApp, where we try to connect founders and bigger corporates uh, so that we start working together. If you're interested, we have our own database on startups called Startup Landscape Austria, where all the startups in Austria are a showcase, maybe even interesting for you, you know, to find a job. So the, you can also find like open positions there. Some of the startups I know are even like at the exhibition at the moment. So just take a look there. And if you're interested, we have also like e-learning content, educational content, if you want to fund your own company or if you're working in a startup and you need some kind of like uh, support. So, straight into it, let's go with the effects of AI on tech jobs. So let me ask you a question. Um, who of you have already used some, any kind of AI you know, on a daily basis? Just hands up so that you understand it. So, a lot, so I believe two years ago, would have been the other way around, but because of like ChatGPT, Aleph Alpha and Core, so generative AI, uh, AI has gotten like mainstream, at least in some use cases. And um, this new trend, this new technology is disrupting, is really changing um, economies, industries, sectors, a lot of companies with positive and also some negative effects, but this is something we're gonna talk now about it. So, I want to show you a, a short stat by Goldman Sachs, um, Big Bang. This is uh, um, a study from this year. As you can see, you see a depiction of different countries. Yeah? You see emerging markets, you see developed markets. On the right, you see more than developed markets. You can see Singapore, UK, USA, Sweden, and so on. Austria will also be on this side. On the left, the more left you go, the more you see the emerging markets. And what is it showing this stat? Well, it's showing what is the exposure to automation by AI on a job basis. So where will AI have great effects on the job market? At least short term and mid term. And here in the developed markets, you see a lot of effects, more effects than more on the, on the other side. This will also change long term, but so the developed markets, are those who really will be affected by automation through AI on a job level basis in the, in the upcoming years, and they've already been affected. Let me give you another stat. This one depicts the effects of AI on a, a job level basis. So it's not just about now the whole region, the country, but as you can see, on the left, you see different kind of jobs, let's say building and building grounds, uh, let's say installation, what else can we see? We can see maintenance, repair, construction, and so on. On the right, you see other kind of jobs. Legal, community and social services, consulting, computer and mathematics, and so on. So on the left, you see more the, the type of blue color jobs, as it is called. And on the right, you see more the, the type of white color jobs, as it is called, on a job level basis. So 
question to you, where do you think at least short term is a higher effect by AI in terms of like a lot of like the to do's will be automated? What do you think? Programmers. Programmers, yeah? Is it more on the right or on the left? Maybe this, this would be the better question. Where do you see the effect? Yeah? Good. I mean, you guess right, I mean, it's written there. But what I want to show you, the jobs on the left side, the so-called blue color jobs, <coughs> won't be at least short term affected on a high basis by automation through AI. Whereas on the right side, you see a lot of effects. At least, as it calls, uh, there can be changes on productivity, on automation, and so on and so on. It's not that all the jobs here will be replaced by AI, that's not it. Okay? But there's a higher short term effect. Long term, we will also see changes here. I'll just give you an example. So, uh, in construction, in the construction business, so if you build real estates, there's a lot of manual work. But there are even already startups who, for instance, build up factories where uh, whole um, buildings, let's say wooden buildings, are um, totally uh, constructed by robots. By robots. This is something what is happening already in Austria. So in Upper Austria, there's a startup called Gropius, which automates the whole building process, um, at least for uh, wooden base buildings. And what I, what I think is interesting about it is like, uh, you know, software engineers, tech guys, uh, in the last two, three decades, they have been the disruptors. So they have changed totally industries because of like coding, because of like software, um, they disrupted markets. And as it seems now, they themselves are getting disrupted by AI. But let me tell you something, the message for today is not that all the software engineers will be replaced now by AI, that's not the case, because I will also show you opportunities. First, like if um, impression is, oh God, will I lose my job and so on. Um, if you adapt and adjust to this technology, to this trend, and if you really learn the skills that are necessary, you will have a bright future. But I will start with that, but I think it's very nice from a disruptor to getting disrupted. So what are the main changes uh, you will see based on AI, so the term effects of AI on the job market, on tech jobs? So first of all, what is repetitive will be automated. So any kind of to-do, work, and so on. If it's repetitive, think about data entry, quality assurance, yeah. There will be software, there will be AI that will replace this kind of uh, activity. This is one of the first changes that, that is already happening, will be happening. Then, what you can also see, you will have a shift in the job position and job roles and in terms of like what is being required in terms of skill as a, a tech uh, guy, as a software engineer and so on. So, what does it mean? First, skills like machine learning, are increasing. So the requirement to understand how machine learning is going, how it is functioning, how we can use it, or natural language language processing, so NLP, I'm not sure if you know all of it, but these are like um, skills that uh, are increasing already and will increase even further. <clears throat> change number two. Change number three, for sure, as similar to like the, the uh, let's say the, the re repetitive task and so on, um, there will be much more productivity and efficiency, particularly when it comes to data engineering, when it comes to data analysis. So about everything that is related to data, particularly big data, um, there will be much more efficiency because they can be analyzed on a, hutch, on a much higher scale uh, because of AI. Change number three. We are not, we're not finished yet, so there will be other changes as well. Um, another thing is, you, even though the, tech is progressing and will be more important uh, for companies uh, and the job profiles. Still, the collaboration, the partnership between AI and human interaction will be present, but it will change. Why? Because AI, at least until now, it might change in 10 years, let's say, uh, still lacks uh, creativity. So creativity is a very, very strong competence, very strong skills that is like uh, made by people, sure. There will be AI who can be creative as well. Think, just think about like, let's say the, the AI image and the tools, volumes or whatever, so you can create images or videos. But creativity is something where humans still have the upper hand. 
So that's where a lot of collaboration um, will happen, but also in decision-making processes. So, um, for instance, at the Chamber of Commerce, where I'm working, it's, um, it's a public organization with over a thousand people, a lot of the processes still there um, are not that effective. A lot of manual work, okay? Um, and actually, um, there's a lot of like time and cost like uh, consumed just because of the processes, the manual processes. So, where you will see, or where you will see like uh, effects is on decision making processes. So, because AI will generate all the data, it will analyze the data, uh, you will be like uh, recommended about your decision making. So, there will be like option one, option two, option uh, uh, three, and then it will be easier for you to do the decision making based on the AI you're using. This is something where you will also see a big change and already seen a, a big change. Then, Ethical AI, maybe some of you have heard about it, it's something very big on the European Union level. Uh, ethical and regulatory considerations. So, um, think about it. Um, the AI only works what it is like filled in with data. So the AI uses data that is there, and then, for instance, analyzes it. So based on the data, uh, the AI can even have like biases. So this kind of ethical and regulatory considerations, meaning that to make AI more fair, more transparent, and so on. This is something which we'll see uh, in the upcoming years uh, when it comes to using AI. And change number six, relating to you particularly, you will see new kind of jobs being created and a strong economic impact. This is something we'll see, think about prompt engineering. So if you use ChatGPT, you type in a question, then you will get like uh, a response. So everything that goes into this direction, prompt engineering, this is something where a lot of new jobs will be created in, in companies. Uh, or AI research, think about it. Or uh, consulting, so a lot of companies want to use AI, but they don't know how to use it. Which kind of AI, what, what is important, what are the effects. So this is where you will see um, a lot of, a lot of like, uh, jobs being created. Also, uh, think about if you are, I don't know who are software engineers here, but think about deployment processes, there will be a lot of like uh, changes uh, because of AI, because we're much faster than before. So, so is the main question now that um, people with, in the tech job industry or in the tech industry are becoming obsolete? This is the main question. Huh? Uh, I have like a lot of discussions with also acquaintances and friends, let's say, who are in Silicon Valley or in the tech industry, there are job cuts. Um, and they are really afraid, so what is happening? So this is if you see it from a more pessimistic side, but I'm not this kind of guy, I see it more from an optimistic uh, side, uh, type, uh, perspective, because I believe you, if you start using it for your own like, uh, purpose, uh, you will uh, benefit a lot, and industries and companies will uh, benefit a lot, and even like economies in total. So that's why I want to show you the opportunities. So it's not about, hey, there won't be like any kind of tech jobs uh, in future because AI will replace it. This is, this is not uh, something that uh, is going to happen. There will be effects uh, in some industries, in some uh, job profiles, but uh, there will be even greater effects in terms of like the opportunities that will arise out of it. So first of all, uh, think about uh, if you are in the tech industry and um, uh, you want, for instance, to set, let's say you want to make up a briefing for, a, let's say, a talk here, or you want to code something, you will have more increased automation. And the increased automation means, for instance, that you can, let's say, automate codes. For instance, you don't have to write the code yourself, but the code will be created by the AI. But you need to understand how you can use it, what do you, do you need to type in, what about the prompt engineering, so that you get the, get the right code. This is something my wife did uh, some days ago. Uh, she wanted to uh, develop something. She used ChatGPT, generated AI, and uh, a code was created. Still, she, have to, she has to re-evaluate it and check it, but it works really well. Um, also think about the bug de detection processes. Someone is in a, uh, has someone worked with bug detection? So meaning that they're trying to uh, figure out what kind of uh, failures are there in the code? Someone with bug detection, yeah, you. So also here, this will be much more automated. Uh, this will be much faster, uh, must, uh, much like uh, less uh, cost intensive. Also, what you also will see a strong emphasis on AI and machine learning. So uh, on the one hand, you have this threat, okay, automation and so on and AI, but on the other hand, companies 
are starting to move their focus, strategic focus, much more on AI and machine learning. So, because they're putting their focus there, they need more skilled people. They need, first of all, reskill their own employees, and then they need, need to hire people who have understandings about it. This is very, very important. Uh, there will be um, also like uh, cases where new apps based on AI will be created, or if you want to implement current AI, in a, let's say in a, in, a, in a present software, in an embedded software, that's also something where they need help and support, your support, um, fortunately. Um, this is something I mentioned. So because of automation, because you uh, uh, can automate repetitive tasks, because you can gather, collect uh, more data more easily, much more, uh, uh, much faster, uh, the development process of building codes, building software products, will be much, much, much more rapid. So think about it um, now, what is the time to enter for an MVP? Let's say three months, four months. In future, maybe it will just take some days, maybe some seconds. Okay? So you can create much, much more products, test it, embedded data. Also, the deployment process. So if you want to launch it, this will be much, much, much faster. Then, something which I believe will also happen um, is there will be much um, a stronger focus on cloud native development. So this is something I feel, think will rise. Uh, and increase because of uh, the use of AI, and the big tech companies are already like uh, trying uh, to move into this direction uh, stronger. Also, not only in Europe, but overall, um, security and data privacy, particularly for citizens, um, is a big topic. So think about the uh, European Union AI Act, um, which a lot of companies fear that it will be just too regulated. Uh, there's potential here, potential for you, you know, to focus on when it comes to security, privacy, think about what happens if there are is the AI software that launches attacks, what then, what kind of defense me mechanisms do we have? So, there's a lot of potential there. Um, and, also, what will happen, because of the use of the AI, if you really implement it in a company, um, there's potential that all the other departments and teams will start working together at a higher uh, level. Maybe you have heard about this silo type of a silo type of like working in big corporates where the one department doesn't talk with the other. Because of the uh, AI, or because of AI, what I see is more collaborative and interdisciplinary work because everyone uses the same software, you gather much more data, you can work faster, and this I think will increase this kind of uh, interdisciplinary work between, this, um, between the different departments. And last, opportunity number seven, ethical considerations. Ethical AI. Um, this year was the South by Southwest. I'm not sure if you know it. It was one of the biggest tech conferences in, in, in the world, in the US, in Austin. And um, um, this is something that is really big, particularly in Europe. So everything that goes into ethical considerations, how does AI work? What are the, the biases that can be created because of AI? What are the effects? How can you reduce this kind of, let's say, uh, um, um, uh, this kind of bias? This is huge, this is big, and will create a lot of opportunities um, for like um, uh, new candidates, new recruits uh, in this field. So, yeah, and last, um, so because I wanna also show you that I'm also like very open, you know, to using AI, I'm not trying to, uh, to see too pessimistic. Uh, I also use uh, AI already for my day-to-day -day work. I um, uh, also use it for this presentation because when I started to structure this presentation, I just used ChatGPT to structure the presentation for me with all the contents. Uh, and it saves me a lot of time. Um, uh, and that are the positive aspects uh, of AI. So when I say the effects of AI on tech jobs, I'm not saying it from a negative perspective, but more from a positive perspective because if you really use it, if you really reskill yourself, uh, you will benefit out of it and um, you will have more opportunities in the future. So my talk is not about um, the pessimism, it's about what is the potential out there for you. Thank you very much from my side. If you're interested, to get in touch. Uh, or if you want to find your own startup company or if you're feedback, come to me. Thank you very much as well. I have also a few questions for you. If you can please ask me one, uh, how can companies effic uh, effic uh, effic effectively uh, balance the utilization of AI technologies uh, while still valuing and retaining the human workforce? Can you just repeat the last sentence? The last sentence. Uh, um, 
We want to answer this in just one. Oh, maybe I can read it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. This one? Yeah. Okay, go ahead and balance the position of this one while still value and retaining the more work. Okay, how can companies effectively balance the utilization of AI technologies while still valuing, valuing and retaining their human workforce? Yeah, very difficult sentence, I understand. <laughs> um, so first of all, um, what, also, what usually happens is, um, when I'm in a, in a company, and uh, they want to know you start using AI, you know? Yeah. Um, there will be like um, positive feedback, negative feedback, and so on. But really, what really helps is that, uh, that you make some kind of benchmark with other companies, you talk to them who are already using AI, because there are a lot of companies using it, so that they understand what are the effects and how can you implement it on, in a level that it becomes efficient and so not that like the, the employees in your, in your uh, company are afraid that they will lose the job. So I think this is a process. Some companies adjust much faster, but for some, based on the uh, organizational culture, think about companies that are 100 years old, for instance, in an industry or whatever, it takes more time. So I think you need to benchmark yourself, you need to get in touch with the companies who have already um, integrated it, uh, and you need to open yourself uh, and not just uh, uh, try to regulate it and say, no, cut it off, it, it doesn't work, uh, or it's, it's too dangerous. I think this is wrong because then what you will see, why is AI so, why is the effect of AI so big? Because it uh, affects all industries, all industries. So there's no one industry that will only be affected. So if you don't use it for your own benefit as a company, what I think you will be get, get out completed. That's it, in a much faster rate. I think for now, thank you very much. I hope you will have a few minutes also for the participants if they want to ask some questions. You? Yeah, for, uh, we can also, you can also uh, uh, connect with me on LinkedIn and then uh, we can set up a video or whatever and we'll support you as well. Yeah, LinkedIn is yeah. very nice. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> thank you as well. So thank you very much. Thank you.